Ugh, never mind. So I want to center this video on the language patterns for sales, but more on the side of objection handling because it is usually the biggest problem of salespeople. It is not that much to create a rapport with people. It's more, okay, once we get to the price or once we get to the problematic uh, discussion, then what are the objections that the client has? This is usually the, the real pain point of salespeople. So five uh, language patterns here. Some of them are very similar, but you will notice that there is a different wording, different words to express the same kind of idea uh, between some of them. It is because the more words you have to describe a concept, the better chances you have to reframe what the, what the prospect just said in a way that will compel him to buy, or at least to invest in your idea. The first one is, if I can be honest with you, there is a catch in that offer and be legitimate about this. Find something negative to say about your product or the thing you want them to invest on. Find something negative, whatever it is, even make it up, even create something negative into your actual product if you need to. But telling that will reassure the prospect that you're not just trying to sell them something at all costs, that you are actually taking care of what they need and um, telling them there is something problematic. Maybe you can then explain why this problem has been handled, but you know what I have been finding really useful with this is uh, I had read the book uh, Influenced by Cialdini, Robert Cialdini, that you probably know about, and he's mentioning that, uh, that, that, that study that, you know, telling people as a waiter, telling people in a restaurant, uh, oh, you shouldn't buy this dish, you know, you should buy this one, uh, although this one, because it is better, or like, oh, the fish tonight, not really good, take this one. When, you, when they were doing this, people tended to tip way more, the waiter. And I had only read that book later, but even before that, as a teenager, I had worked in some restaurants as a waiter, and I hated that it was horrible, and I didn't hesitate to tell people, oh, this dish is really shit, you know, don't take that. But it was not to get some tips, it was just because I really thought it was, it was disgusting. And so, curiously, very often people were giving me a tip, like 20, bill, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, like this. And it happened like three or four times within the, the month I have been working there. And I didn't really understand why, but when, once, once I had um, read that book, Influence, I noticed, well, actually I had always been telling those guys to not take this because I was, you know, advising them to choose this dish uh, rather than this one. So. It is really an incredible concept. When you tell something like this, if I can be honest with you, there is a catch with that offer, you know, don't take this one, better take that one. It really helps to make, create the rapport between you and uh, the prospect, the client. The second one is, I perfectly understand you need time to think. This one is more like a softener. It may, may not be an actual language pattern by itself, depends how you use it, but it's more like to soften the, maybe the, um, the defense, defensive uh, attitude your client may have when you announce the price or something like this. It helps to, to maintain the rapport and it, pay, it is pacing the objection if there is any. Usually one of the biggest objections is, oh, I need time to think. You can uh, Instead of trying right away to push, no, no, I, I, want, I want you to close this now. No, just say, okay, yeah, of course I understand you need time to think and it's no more. It is an important decision, you know. That way you're reassuring once again that yes, you have their legitimate interest at heart and don't, don't just try to push the sales, the, the sale at all cost. The third one is, mm, you shouldn't buy this. Actually, you shouldn't buy this today. If I can be honest, once again, you shouldn't buy this today. And then elaborate some you know, future promotion. If there is anything with the product you are selling that will get better, like for Christmas, it is going to, it's going to get uh, some promotion, but it's not official. It is like an insider tip, which actually every salespeople in the company is using, but make it sound like it is some insider tip that actually, mm, you know, I'm going to tell you if I can be, okay, let's just you and me. I'm going to tell you, don't buy this today. Wait until next week. When you give tips, tips like this, it really helps to create the link between you and the client because once again, it shows you have their best interest at heart and don't just try to push the sale. The fourth one is, uh, you know, one month, one month ago, we had a client who complained about this. 
This one is to use if uh, you know the prospect over the phone or the prospect in front of you is worried about one of the features of your product. Let's say you promise to deliver uh, such result in such an amount of time, uh, this result in only two weeks, and the client, the, the prospect, just don't believe it's possible. He thinks, no, 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 don't try. Hey, you see me? Don't even try to lie to me. It's not possible. And in that case, one really we, we great way is to use the quote from the Milton model, the quote, uh, like one client, one client one month ago indeed complained about the time, the time problem that it took longer than expected. So that way you paste the objection and you use, you use that, that as, a, as a leverage to explain that because of that complaint one month ago, you have indeed solved the problem and you have changed the transportation, if it is a time problem, you have changed the transportation um, method so that the product is being delivered on time. But use that instead of saying directly, oh no, sir, you're wrong, we have actually uh, dealt with that. Instead of directly saying it like this, use it, uh, say it by using the um, the idea, the, the complaint, the imaginary complaint of somebody else who would have been complaining about this before and oh yeah, you know, I definitely understand your, your concern because yes, we had a client who complained one month ago or even 10 clients who complained uh, one or two months ago about this time problem on the deliver, um, when we deliver the product. So we have changed the transportation service so that by now, yes, it works. You know, frame it like this, by mentioning some past client's trouble, that way you paste the, the fear or the objection of your client and you link that with the solution. Actually, we have dealt with that because we had this problem before. You know, it helps to reassure the client once again that you're really taking care of them and don't, don't just try to push the sale. And the last one, the fifth one, is kind of more direct. It is to be used with caution, of course. It is, if you don't mind me asking, what is the missing thing for you to buy? What is the main thing missing for you to buy right now? So this one indeed, of course, requires much more rapport because if you ask this right away by, by entering into a shop, uh, entering into an office, doing call, door knocking, that pre will probably not work at all. But once you get you know, deeper into the discussion and you could notice already some signs of interest from your, the prospect, you know, body language becoming more open, closer to the, the, the paper you're showing them, some signs like this uh, showing that it's going to be on, but there is still some reluctance then you can ask kind of direct questions like this. Like if, you, if I could ask you, if you allow me to ask, what is missing, what is the main thing missing for you to buy right now? If I could ask you if there was one thing missing for you to buy right now or to buy within this week or to invest in our company within this week, what would that be? That way, you are pinpointing exactly the main problematic objection. Very, most of the time, it comes down to I don't trust you or uh, I, I'm already working with somebody. You know, there's always something like this, but the, the main objection is usually not the one you will hear in the very beginning because especially if you are doing door knocking or cold calling, the first objections you hear, you hear uh, are just uh, a habitual sales breaker, salespeople breaker, they are just uh, things like I'm not interested or oh, I already have something about this, uh, some, some, somebody taking care of that service for me. Those ones are not the real objections. The real objections are something much deeper like I don't, uh, I don't know you enough, stuff like this. And by asking a question like this, like this one, what is missing for you to buy today, you will, you will have more chances. It's not a 100% uh, sure thing, but you will have more chances to target deeper what is the real problem preventing them from buying. Maybe it's just a money problem, too expensive, very common too expensive, in that case, maybe you can use some comparison. Comparison with uh, how much is it going to cost you if you don't invest, like if you sell solar, uh, solar, sol solar panels, panels, sorry for my accent, <laughs> if you sell solar to somebody and they say it's too expensive, uh, I think it's a great thing about solar sellers, salespeople, that they are comparing to the, the, actually the money it costs to not have something like this in your garden or in your house, and that way you can compare the price. Some comparison or just uh, if you have some additional 
possible offer, like uh, you can break down the price in several monthly payments. Just use something like this. Always be flexible and that will depend, of course, with the, um, with the, the actual company you are wor working for or, or working with. It always depends, but at least you will have been targeting the main essential problem by asking a question like this. Now, if you want to go deeper onto how you can use language to persuade people, how can you reframe objections to get people to buy or to change their state of mind about something, you have a complete covered hypnosis tutorial in the description at the first link where you will have a complete, a complete structure from start to finish for how to create very persuasive language and how to improvise persuasive language at will, taking care of objections and helping people to take good decisions. <laughs>